Today, our champion, Dave Richards of Woburn, faces the challenge of Wayne Denon of Wakefield, Massachusetts, on candlepin bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Candlepin Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and speaking for the whole crew, we're glad you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts, for three strings of Candlepin Bowling, total pinfall determining our winner. Each bowler takes home a permanent souvenir. These are provided by Weeks Trophy Company of Lynn, and each will take home some prize money. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. $700 goes to the winner, $350 to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously, if they tie a string we split that at $25 a piece there are other opportunities for our bowlers to make money Dave knows very well about that an extra $100 for a 400 series three marks in a row $50 three strikes in a row an additional bonus of $1,000 we also have a $50 gift certificate uh, to our marksman of the day the bowler who has the most marks that comes from Rotman's furniture and carpet store of Worcester Massachusetts and I'll be telling you more about that as the program goes along but let's not waste any more time let's talk to today's bowlers shall we Wayne good to see you again good good to see you again too. and you know something I am just fascinated by the fact that you guys were in a fantastic roll-off together weren't you huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was quite a good one you. you rolled a what in your 709 709 and you rolled obviously a 722 how about that huh and so you won the roll-off that time then you had to go someplace else huh yeah I went the next day and I threw another 700 just like that huh? yeah no problem <laughs> nothing to it no easy problem. to say now all right <laughs> and now you come on here and roll a 422 yeah and move yourself into fourth place for our championship you wouldn't mind joining him there would you no, not at all not at all what, what do you think that all the folks at melrose bolodrome are going to be thinking about both of you guys representing the house here you think there might be a few folks around the tv today oh yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right let's give them something to cheer about then shall we good luck to both of you and we'll get underway right after this Candlepin Bowling is sponsored in part by Cotter True Value, the You Can Do It hardware store. Getting us underway, today's challenger, Wayne Denon. Wayne comes here with a league average of 126. Four horsemen left side, plus the five and the eight. That's what he's looking at. Just missed a spare. The five pin stayed up. Wayne has a high single of 189. It's a 10. His triple, 459. I guess even uh, all of the folks who are tuned in who are blind or have limited sight know what happened there. Yes, it was a strike. All right, now here comes our defending champion, Dave Richards of Woburn. His average, 125. Though he sure did better last week. Rolling a 422. Four horsemen right side plus the nine pin. And he made it for a spare. Dave's high single, 191. His high triple, 468. So close to putting a hammer on top of that, he left the five pin, the king pin. Not this time he didn't leave it, though. He has two marks in a row. All right, the first ball did not get him much as it went too far off to the right. He almost pulled it off. He left the nine pin. So nine is the fill, and he'll be trying to make a ten out of it. Thin hit. 
at that time, he left the two, five, six, seven, eight, and ten. Ralph Stewart calls time, our Loblin judge and referee, and he wants to go down to check on a piece of wood to see whether it is behind the dead wood line. Well, if it had been this side of it before, it is now rolling behind it, and it's going now over into the left gutter. Nine. Okay, two marks in a row up there now by our defending champion, Dave Richards. Six is his fill, and he's got the one, three, nine, and ten to try to convert for $50 in bonus money, and he does not do it. He leaves the nine and ten. It's a nine. Al Giglio, as usual, is keeping score on the electronic scoreboard, and Keith Williams is keeping score on the big board for the folks who are here. Our defending champion, Dave Richards, looking at two, four, seven, and nine. And yes, he made it. Nice shot. So, with a bonus ball still to be thrown by our defending champion, the score right now as we pause here after four boxes of the first string is Richards 54, Denon 48. Our challenger on the line now, fifth box opening string. Missed the head pin on the right-hand side. Last time Wayne was here, which was a little over two years ago. As a challenger, he defeated our then champion, Dan Gallant, rolling a 375. It's an eight box. And the next week, he ran into one of the toughest of the bowlers around, Gary Carrington, who threw a 391 at him in order to defeat him. Once again, Wayne missing the head pin. Just just missing it, but he's missing it. So he has left the one, two, eight with wood and back, plus the six and ten. Yes, he did it. strike for our defending champion he has left the nine pin but the fill is nine and he has wood all around the nine so four marks in the first five boxes for our defending champion seven and the three pin standing together, he has the three and six over on the right, over on the left, the seven pin. He's looking it over very carefully. There is one piece of wood behind the six over towards the seven, and one in between. He knew as soon as he released it that he had missed the three pin. Immediately turned around. Nine. Challenger, Wayne Denon. A nine pin fill. Now the single pin that he wants is the head, uh, the uh, five pin, the king pin. He's got a piece of wood that's perpendicular to the pit and to himself, which keeps rolling back and forth. He wants it to get out of the way. It has, so he should have a clear shot at it. 
Well, it wasn't a clean shot at it, but however it worked. Now two in a row. Sixth and seventh boxes for string. Two full on the head pin. It winds up as a spread eagle. Check out the left side. And the right side. Our crew today is Bob Oliver, Bob Armitage, Jeff Sullivan, Judy Guile, George Ellard in post-production videotape, and of course our producer-director is Phil Rubin. Dave Richards. One, three, seven, and nine. One, three, and nine together, obviously, and the seven is over on the left. It had a piece of wood in front of it, and he made it. Very pretty spare. Big nine. One pin to pick up, and that is the 10 pin. Ooh, just missed it. He can't believe he missed it. He's disturbed because he missed it. He's 60 feet away. You gotta see me miss putts when I'm six inches away. Well, maybe not. One, two, four, and ten. No wood to help. And Wayne just missed the left side of the head pin, which is what he had to hit to get over and get the 10. So they are both standing. It's an eight. Wayne is a proud owner of the Melrose Bowler Drum, uh, where both of these bowlers bowl. He's also, uh, he might call himself perhaps a jack of all trades, a little bit of carpentry. He also works as a replacement window installer for green insulation. Baby just missed that 10 pin. Oh, what a pretty shot that was. But the head pin just flew right by the 10 pin and didn't hit it. A 117, which is disappointing because his league average is 126. No problem so far for Dave Richards. Five and six, and he punched out the three. Two full on the head pin, and still standing are the two, four, seven. Five pin, six and ten. Wood in front of the five. Good try. So, Dave Richards wins $50 in bonus money for winning the first string by a score of 137 to 117. Middle string, that means our defending champion leads it off. Here he is, Dave Richards of Woburn. Four horsemen left side, plus the inboard pin on the right side, which is the nine. 
Every once in a while, that Navy talk comes out. Great try. He took out the four horsemen, but didn't get that nine. While I have an opportunity here, I want to remind you, please remember, please try to remember, at least for Channel 5 in Boston, that next Saturday, next Saturday and next Saturday only, our program will be on at 10.30 on Saturday morning. 10.30. Because ABC is going to be putting on a Peter Jennings special beginning at 11.30. Now, as far as Springfield is concerned, I think you better check your local listing. I'm not sure when they will plan to uh, air that program. Spare for Dave Richards. So next week, remember, 10.30 instead of 12 noon on Channel 5 in Boston and check your local listing in Springfield. All right, now our challenger, Wayne Denon. Wayne has a spare lead. The four and the eight. Ooh, too full on the four. Sometimes it takes a while when we get some mail to uh, get a chance to answer it, but had a note from M. Del Vecchio, Broadway in Malden, with some, uh, some kind words about uh, the fact that we do describe everything that's going on as much as possible for persons who are either blind or have limited sight. Also said he's been watching the program for the last 35 years. Well, not quite, because we've been, we, we're coming up on 34. But that's good. I'm glad you've been there from the beginning. Dave Richards right now has a bill of five on his spear in the second. And the five pins that are standing right now are the three, six, ten on the right, and the seven and eight. He had wood, he used it, he has two in a row. When I get a chance, I'll answer a couple of questions that were asked in this letter. Again, it's five for a fill. He's looking at one, two, seven, nine, and ten. Got everything except the ten. The first question that was asked would, was, did Jim Britt precede me on this program, and uh, when did I start? Well, actually, I started three months after the program began, and that's simply because Jim Britt, yes, was the original host, and he was the host for almost 10 years of the 34 that we've been on the air. Uh, the program was live in those days. It started in October, got to be December, snow started falling, and then the thought occurred to management, hey, that program is live, supposing Jim can't make it sometime. So they created a pro part of the program for me in which I interviewed the bowlers, presented the prizes, introduced the uh, uh, different uh, strings, some of the sponsors. And then when Jim went on vacation that first summer, then I filled in for him. Spare now, making it two in a row for Wayne Denon. Then when, uh, by the time Jim decided to retire, which was almost 10 years later, he retired and went out to Carmel, California, where unfortunately he, he died, he passed his on. But by that time, we were doing the program mostly on videotape, so it wasn't necessary to have somebody do the chore that I had been doing previously. Three marks in a row now for Wayne Denon, and because we're going to pause right here, 
after four boxes of the middle string. With a bonus ball still to be thrown by our challenger, Wayne Denon, in pins down, he leads right now 57-49. Okay, here is our defending champion, Dave Richards, on the line, fifth box of the middle string, halfway through. Is it going to be a strike? It was going to be, it appeared, but two pieces of wood came right around that three pin and held it up. So it is a spare. strike on top of his spare. Okay, we have $50 in bonus money for Wayne Denon, who is our challenger today for three marks in a row here in the middle string. Let's see if he can continue it. Now that he has established that bonus of 50, each subsequent consecutive mark in the same string is worth $50 apiece. Oh, did he ever! A hammer! Wow, those 10 pins disappeared so fast. He has two strikes in a row. Wait till he comes up again. An extra bonus of $1,000 if he can make it three in a row. And after he has three in a row, anyone that follows that would be worth $1,000 consecutively, obviously. All right. Working on a strike over here is Dave Richards. And Dave's first ball goes off to the left a bit. He almost made another mark. He left only one, the four pin. That's for a 10. a strike. All right, here it is. Wayne Denon is going up. He has two strikes in a row. Oh, it looked good going down there. It was a left pocket hit, and he should have gotten more out of it than he did. He left the seven pin alone. Over on the right, he has left the Six, nine, and ten. So the bonus streak stops. I don't know. Maybe he rushed it a little. Maybe he was a little anxious. Who knows? But he did have five marks in a row. And right now the match is tied. Wayne has left just the four pin. He's opposite a strike, as you well know. Yes, he made the spare. strike for our defending champion Dave Richards. He now has two strikes in a row. Remember, this first ball could be worth at least a thousand dollars. He left the corner spool. He's got wood that may allow him to do this. 
Great try. Great try. He took out the seven and got a piece of wood to fly across. However, it came this side of rather than right onto the 10 pin. A 155 to go with his 137. Wow, is he hot. Our challenger, Wayne Denon. Four horsemen plus the eight pin on the left and the 10 pin. Two full on the head pin. Obviously, he wanted the one two pocket. a two and seven to pick up for a mark in the tenth box. Just as he was about to release it, he saw the wood start to roll again and stopped. Ooh, stopping like that must hurt. Oh, it didn't work. Nine. And so our defending champion Dave Richards wins the middle two. There were two, as you can see, two excellent strings, but another $50 in bonus money for Dave Richards as uh, he has uh, won this string 155 to 149, leads by 26 pins after two, 292 to 266. Third string and our challenger, Wayne Denon, on the line. He tied this in the seventh box of the middle string. However, he now is down by 26. Two, seven, and 10. Waiting for Wood to settle down. Looked as if it would go with all that wood, but the corners are still full. and seven with wood in front of the seven. Oh, missed the head pin. It's still there, so it's a pair of nines. And disappointed challenger comes back. Last week, you'll recall that, uh, I, maybe you won't, but uh, maybe you weren't watching at that time, but after two strings last week, he was at uh, two, he, he almost pulled off another one. He was at 294, so he needed just a 106 for a 400, an extra $100. Obviously, this time, he only needs a 108 in the third string. close to getting a strike, but it does appear he will get a spare. He has the eight pin. He has a piece of wood right in front of it. That red line is right on the pin. He does not pass that one up. Come on, Wayne, 
Strike. Our challenger, Wayne Denon, has just rolled a strike in the third. First ball nets him eight and leaves him with a four and seven. And Ralph Stewart, who is our lob line judge and referee, going down to take a check. See if it is behind the, and it is behind the Deadwood line. It has to stay there, so he has to be careful with it. But he got it. I've also uh, already mentioned our crew. Ralph, of course, is our lob line judge and referee. And Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. The big boss, is, as you know, Phil Rubin, the captain, producer, director. He's resetting because a pin has fallen. So on lane three, we'll get a new 10. Just four. Now there are three there. It's an eight. He still leaves two over on the right, which are the three and nine, back to back. It's a nine. All right, let's see now what Wayne Denon can do. He has two marks in a row up there, a strike and a spare. So this will be a fill on his spare, trailing by 20 and opposite a nine box. So actually he's trailing by 19. And that will be lessened by how many? Thin hit five. Three six ten over on the right, four and seven over on the left. Ooh, missed everything. It's a seven. So we got it down to 14, but then threw a seven up there in the fifth box. Two, four, and six. Wood to the left of the four. Another piece behind the six. Nope. Had to get that two pin, and he missed it. It's a nine. So after two marks in a row, he had a disappointing seven and nine. Defending champion has just had a nine pin drop. Staring intently at that single pin. All over it. So he's up by 17 plus seven more. 
Up by 24. What's my new break, Dave? It's an eight box. No, it's a ten box. Everything down except the kingpin, the five. 25 pin lead right now with four boxes to go for our defending champion. He has it for a spare. Bear in the seventh. Trying to overcome a 25 pin deficit. That's not what he needed. Half was to right, punching out the three and the nine. Five and six still there. Nice shot to get the side-by-side -side pins, but it's for a 10. Wants a 108. Just missed a spare on the right, which was the six and ten, which would have assured him that he would make it, probably. Now three more boxes. They need these 30 pins in order to get a hundred dollar bonus for going 400 or better. full on the head pin, so he must knock down all of these five pins that are standing. Uh, unless he marks. Took out the right side. That was the three, six, ten. Now he has four and seven on the left. And they go. So again, he is down to the point where if he gets all tens, he will still have his 108. He's not in a position where he must mark in order to get it. Final two boxes now for our challenger, Wayne Denon. And Wayne definitely must mark. Looking at two, seven, ten with some wood. Oh, what a beauty. Oh, what a pretty spare that was. Yes, he used the wood. He used it perfectly. Two, seven, and ten. Pow! Pretty one. Here's the fill. The fill is eight. Depends upon what happens with this wood. The pins are the seven and nine. However, there are three pieces of wood, and they're pretty well spread out. The way they're set up right now, it would appear if he can drive the ball right through the first piece of wood, which is the one that's, the one that's nearest to him in the middle, it would take out the other two and the two pins. Yes, it did. got just four. It's a fine 123. Dave needs 20 pins in the final two boxes. 20 pins would bring him to an even 400. 
Oh, baby. Oh, ho, ho, ho. One and five out of there. Can he clean them up? He still has three more. All right, he now must mark in order to get his 400. One pin to win the match, however, going for the 400. All right, he's already won the match. Now the question is, can he make four horsemen right side plus the eight pin for a... No! And he had to get it. So the best he can do right now is a 399. And that's what it is, a 399. A fine, fine match by two of the bowlers from the Melrose Bowl of Verdrome who just recently were embroiled in coming one and two in a super, super roll-off. And by 10 pins, we have a second victory in succession for Dave Richards, 399 to 389. Okay, our uh, jackpot now, we didn't have a winner last week, which was the first week we were starting after having the opportunity to empty out the, empty out the barrel. As you know, whenever we have a winner, uh, we empty out and we start all over again. And as long as we don't have a winner, we keep adding $50 every single week until we do eventually get someone who uh, is able to guess within 10 pins either side of what the total pinfall is, both bowlers combined, on the day that we draw the card. And today, we're up to a 788. And uh, I'll tell you, Dave was, last week it was a 786. He's in some, some tall cotton here with 7, 8, 786 and 788. But that's the combined total today, which means that, obviously, when I draw a card from here, if that person is within 10 either side, a 778 or a 798, that person would win the $100. If not, be consoled, because as soon as I draw the card, just for having it drawn, you will receive a handsome gift from the Parker Pen Company. All right, and if you want to send in your card to be in this uh, the next time, just send it along to Candle Pin Bowling, WCBB-TV, 5TB Place, Needham, Massachusetts, and the zip is 02192. Be sure and include your name and address and the guests of the total pinfall. All right, let's see now whether we're going to have a winner. 788 for $100. All right. All right, this one comes from North Reading, Massachusetts. Edward Kendrick will receive the Parker pen. Uh, just slightly off. 100, it's six, 688 instead of 788. Okay, all right, now we have a high-low jackpot, and that is up to $1,625. Wow, okay, Wayne. Next week it's going to be worth 1650 Let's see what we have over here for Wayne's World. <laughs> All right. Hey, you made a nice run in that third string, huh? Yeah, you... I, figured, I figured a 400. Yeah. And I'd have a good shot. And I was 11 short. Boy, I know. You, you, you really came on. You came on like a son of a gun. Well, I'll tell you, as a result of that, you had one more mark than he did. So that yeah, makes I you the marksman it. of the day. And that is a $50 gift certificate uh, from Rotman's Furniture Carpet Store of Worcester, Massachusetts. Now, how much money did you get? $350 for being our runner-up. $200 in bonus money oh, man. and uh, you sure didn't shame Melrose I want to tell you either one of you guys today no <laughs> well, I was gonna lose it one of the ball at least good. all right nice to have you Wayne yep. come back and see Thank us you. again will you
Okay, then you now know that you have won two in a row, and if you win three in a row, then you will get the Rotman's uh, chaise, a luxurious velvet recliner, Berkline. So, uh, so all you have to do is win next week. Uh, let's see, how much did you get today? You got $100 in bonus money, $700, and you missed by one pin of that 100 bucks, huh? For another 400. Oh, well. I'm always getting heavy. Right? Was getting, getting a little heavy. <laughs> all right. Michael Giusti is going to be your challenger next week. We look forward to seeing you and him and all you folks, too. Don Gillis and the whole crew. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye -bye.